Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew coming to you from beautiful Costa Rica. This morning's topic is going to be why you feel anger and frustration that you could have allowed this relationship to happen. I know it's a long topic, but this is what we're going to do. If you like the content, please subscribe. And by the way, think about that for a minute. Here we go. Let's jump right into it. So you are out of the narcissistic relationship. You're out 100%. And you're reflecting back on what has happened and you're putting the pieces of the puzzle together like we talk about and you're 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 getting you're making progress everything's going well remember the healing path is not linear and your education on narcissism and or your relationship is certainly not linear it's gonna you're gonna have great days and a couple setbacks things like that but you're gonna reach a point and many of you are there right now because I'm talking with many of you where you believe you're frustrated that how could you let this happen? And you're actually anger, angry at yourself or frustrated or, you know, maybe not using nice words about yourself. Let's put it that way. I want to let you know a bunch of things on this video. First of all, let's go back to the narcissistic relationship. It wasn't your fault. You were manipulated, you were taken advantage of, and you were tricked. That's a fact. Now, you, you may say, well, Yes, Andrew, but you know, I, I did this because I, I was in love and, and I thought that that person loved me. Of course, I understand all of those things. Bear in mind, the narcissist is incapable of love. They don't love people. They use people. They manipulate people. That's why they always come back to you during the relationship. If it's a rocky relationship, they'll always come back, offering you breadcrumbs of hope, trying to get you back to the love bomb stage, trying to control you and manipulate you. And, and this happens frequently in narcissistic relationships. But now we're talking about when the relationship is over and you are reflecting back on yourself and you're saying, wow, like, how did I let this happen? I don't really get it, I don't understand. Um, all these things. Anger is gonna be one of these emotions that you feel throughout the healing path. Now, it, I believe some people get angry longer than others and some people have a longer, um, it, it, it hits them more. But this video is to let you know Number one, embrace your emotions, feel them thoroughly, which means if you're upset or if you feel like screaming, scream. If you wanna go in the bathroom and cry, do that. You need to express and embrace your emotions in a healthy fashion, but anger is one of these. Now, I'm not saying do anything bad, never. I'm just saying that understand it's a natural part of the healing path. You're going to be frustrated with yourself. You're gonna be, you're gonna say to yourself, how could I have let this happen? I don't get it. That's a part, it's a healthy, natural part of the path. That's what we do. Eventually, in time, you will get over that and you will get to the next step, the next, the next stage where you're not angry any longer and you're, you just look back and you say to yourself, wow, okay, it was a learning process. It was not enjoyable. I don't wish this on anybody, but I had to go through it to get to where I am right now. You will be there eventually with the inner work and the dedication and commitment, I can assure you. Keep in mind that the, the healing path is it takes different amounts of time for different people. So maybe you're stuck in this anger phase. Maybe you've been there for a couple months or maybe longer. What that means, it means you, you need to do more work with yourself, for yourself and by yourself. Meaning, if you're still stuck in a certain stage on the healing path, it, it literally means, put, picture it this way, and this is, a, this is a compliment, it's nothing negative. On the channel, we spread nothing but love and education. But picture it this way, when you were in grade school, and let's say that you didn't pass fifth grade, for whatever reason, the teacher, you, you didn't pass it. Well, you probably had to go to summer school to take that, the, the, whatever course you didn't pass, over, and then you would be uh, bumped up into the sixth grade. I hope that example makes sense. But that's exactly what you did in grade school, maybe even high school, maybe you didn't pass chemistry and you had to take it during summer class or whatever or get a tutor and then you pass it and then you, you advanced on to 10th grade or whatever it was. It's the same thing on the healing path. It really is. You can't just, it's not like there's a roadmap A to Z and you, you okay, I did A, I did B. And it, it's not a race. It's not, it's not a, a speed game. Everything takes time. And frequently on the healing path, when you say to yourself, okay, I'm good. I, I, I understand that. I, I, I'm going to move forward. I, I get that part. Frequently, what you will find is you're going to have another setback. And when that setback happens, you don't know when, where, or how. It could, anything could happen. But then that's when you're, you're like, what the setback is, by the way, it, it's you being tested. It sincerely is. And when, it depends on how you handle that test, if you pass it or not. And believe me, with dedication and education and commitment and resilience, you will pass all of these tests in time, in your time. 
But once you get tested again, you're like, oh my God, I did it. And then you're going to have one of your light bulb moments. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Andrew was right. I'm doing it. That's the whole idea. I, I really need you to understand that. But having said all these things, getting back to with anger, please understand that you were manipulated. You were taken advantage of for your looks, your beauty, your finances, your resources, anything you offered, the love, the kindness, the empathy, the physical abilities, whatever you had and have. That's what the narcissist saw, and they saw this, and they wanted to take it from you. Now, the anger part of the relationship, remember, this is post-relationship, it takes time to process this because we as human beings tend to be more difficult on ourselves than we are on others. In other words, we expect ourselves to be held to a higher level of accountability and respectability, and that's just, that's just the way it is. We always believe that we are better and we should, we should know better and we should have higher boundaries and all these things. And it's all true, I agree. No one is harder on you than you are. It's just the way it is. But you need to understand that you did not know who you were dealing with. You did not know about narcissism and you do now. So the anger, if you're, if you're still in the part or if you are in the part of the post-narcissistic relationship where you're feeling frustrated, frustrated, like how could I let this happen? What, what, what did I do wrong? Or like, like, I'm so angry, you know, I'm so whatever, whatever the bad words are. I'm gonna suggest a few things. One, please don't use negative words in your vocabulary. Really try to practice that because your words are powerful. They're extremely important and they have a massive impact, not only on you and your daily activities, but your life in general. So I'm strongly suggesting use positive words always. If you have the option to use a negative word or a positive word, I sincerely suggest you use positive words. If you can nail this part down of, this, of the video, it will help you out so much so. Why I'm saying that is because when we get angry or we're angered, usually we tend to, to uh, vocalize or, or, or say things that out of anger. And these a lot of times are not positive words. They're not positive messages or thoughts or expressions. If you can flip that script and yeah, embrace your anger, but use positive words, that already will be a huge change for you. I can assure you. The second thing is understand with your anger, it's part of the healing path. And yes, you didn't know what you were dealing with. Now you do. So just embrace it, understand it. Don't be so hard on yourself. Don't be, don't be, don't take all the brunt of this on your shoulders. You've already gone through enough. You've already experienced enough. We don't want you stuck in this position. We don't want you beating your head against the wall and, and being like, wow, how did I do this? I'm so silly or whatever it is. You know, do it for a little bit and move on. That's my suggestion, it really is, because the sooner you understand that you were not, on, you were not in a relationship on a level playing field and that everything was skewed to the narcissist's favor, the sooner you're gonna understand that, wow, it wasn't my fault, and actually, I'm not a silly person, and actually, I was taken advantage of. Just admit those things, if that's how you feel, embrace them, understand, become educated, and learn and move forward. That's the first part. The second thing is, remember this, the narcissist saw all the beautiful attributes you had. They wanted them. And you most likely were and or are an empath. And you were saying, I wanna contribute, I wanna be with this person, I wanna help the business succeed, I want to help my brother or sister out. Whatever it is, whomever it is, and whatever the relationship is, that's how you are built, that's your nature, that's how you exist. So don't change that, continue to be the way you are, but now build and maintain and adhere to your boundaries. Boundaries are imperative for an empath. They're absolutely imperative. And most likely you didn't have them or you were just so caught up in the love bomb stage or so caught up in helping people that you didn't quite, you gave to a fault and you didn't really understand that your contributions were actually detrimental to yourself. You see, the reason why that is is because if the narcissist saw how much you were contributing, again, in any capacity, if they saw that, what did they want to do? That's right, they wanted to take more and more from you. And you being an empath, you would always give more and more. And you see, the boundaries were being pushed. Pushed, 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 pushed. In favor of the narcissist, you were being given, you were giving to a fault continuously on that hamster wheel. You did not know it, but you felt good about yourself because you were contributing, you were helping another person, you were in love, you were contributing to the business. Whatever you were doing, you were feeling good about it. That's how you went to bed at night. You're like, wow, I feel good. I'm making a difference in this business. I'm making a difference in this person's life. What, whatever it is, that's how you are built. The narcissist, when they went to bed those nights, were thinking, 
this is unbelievable. I have them exactly where I want them and tomorrow or in a couple days, I'm gonna push even more and get more from them. That's what they are thinking. That's what they were thinking. And that's what they're thinking right now, wherever they are. So please embrace your emotions, understand them, fully embrace them and understand this was not your fault. You did not have the education, the enlightenment or the empowerment, now you do. Now we move forward and we help ourselves first, second and third. Remember, we are the priority now. It's not the narcissist, it's, it's nobody else like that. It's us. So the anger, I understand it. I've been there and it comes and it goes. The further, the further along you are on the healing path, I can assure you, the less anger you have. It, it really dissipates over time, it sincerely does. And it will always do that. And you may say, why is that, Andrew? Is it just because of time? It's because of time, and it's also because of the inner work you're putting into yourself and all the discoveries you're learning about you as an individual. And you're learning why things happen and how they could have happened and what you can do to prevent these from happening again in the future. That's called growth, and that's what this channel is based on. It's based on education and growth. So please, don't be, <clears throat> excuse me, don't be giving yourself such a hard time and being stuck in the anger stage and saying to yourself, wow, I, I, how could I let this happen? How could I do this? I don't get it, I'm so loving, I'm so kind, I have so much to offer. Yes, there's a point where you need to do that and there's a period of time where you need to do that. But to be stuck in that position, to be stuck in that rumination, that point of banging your head against the wall, that's an expression, we don't want that because you're not moving forward. So like we talk about in the channel before I close this out, I'm gonna side note just so, so I can hammer this home to you guys. Remember this, if you're living in the past, this is it for anybody watching this video, and by the way, thank you for being here. If you're living in the past, this is not good. Because when you're living in the past, you cannot move forward. You cannot live in the present. Play that again. A prime example of this would be, let's say years, forget the narcissist, for years ago something happened to you, whatever it was, death in the family or I don't know, some accident, I don't wanna go down that road, whatever it was. But if you're always playing that memory from the past in your head, and you're like, wow, I wish I could have done something different, or I feel so bad, or things like that, that means that you're still stuck in the past, and it means you can't grow, you can't move forward, because your mental state of mind is always going back to the past, and you'll be stuck in that, you really will. The idea to get yourself out of that situation of ruminating about the past, is to embrace it, take a day, take a week, think about what you went through, think about your experiences, process your emotions, and just fully heal and know that it's okay. Whatever happened in the past, it's over with, it's done, there's nothing you can do about it. And I know you want to change things from the past, I get it, we all would like to change things, but we can't. What we have is the here and now, this exact time where you're here with me on the video watching and becoming educated, that's what we can control. We control the here and the now, the present moment. That is exactly what we control. So getting back on track with the narcissist, if you're thinking, if you're still thinking, wow, I'm so angry, I'm, I'm so upset, there's nothing you can do about that. It's over with, it's done. I strongly suggest you process that, understand that you're a human being and that you were manipulated, and then let it go. I know it sounds easy, it will take time, but you will do it. So guys, I hope this video benefited you. Please don't be so difficult on yourselves. Understand it's part of, it's part of life. It's part of a path that you are on. With, and I know you didn't choose it. I didn't choose it either. But we need to understand the tools to get us from point A to point B. We do not want to be stuck in the past. We want to be moving forward always. Guys, the little video is very long. I hope you liked the video. I loved doing it from beautiful Costa Rica. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great day. I will talk to you in the afternoon. God bless you. Stay blessed. Remember. Give yourself a break. You're a beautiful person. Embrace yourself. You're absolutely amazing. You have so much to offer. I love you all. God bless you. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.